So, Dr. Goosby, thank you so much for being here for the program at the IIS. This is uh, 2009 in South Africa, mm -hmm. and appropriately so, you should be here. And it's, it's always good to see our government investing in the, uh, the work around the world. And I would ask that since the new administration, do you have uh, a shift? What are your shifts in priorities? What are your top three priorities at this point? Well, I think that um, our priorities are trying to continue the good work that PEPFAR has done. Uh, President Bush was uh, extraordinary in his uh, commitment to the issues around HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria in the world, and PEPFAR was a manifestation of that commitment. Uh, we hope that the extraordinary medical development of delivery systems in countries uh, that did not and had not mounted a scaled response will continue. Uh, the commitment we've made to the patients who are on antiretrovirals, who are in the countries and participating in high-risk behaviors, that that be a focus and an increased focus to PEPFAR. The need to enhance and expand prevention efforts is what I specifically mean. Mm -hmm. Our ability to incorporate um, the maternal to child health projects uh, and go to scale instead of being in the 30 to 40 percent range, we need to be in the 80 to 90 percent range and achieve 100 percent where possible. The other aspect of it is the realization that these programs are not going to be durable unless the countries, our partner countries in which we are in, engage on both a management as well as a prioritizing of unmet need, plans, and finally on a financial level with these projects. We um, understand the urgency that characterized kind of PEPFAR 1. Uh, the urgent emergent nature of implementation was engaged and it was rapidly deployed. But we now need to continue those efforts where needed, but we need to take pause and refocus ourselves on making sure that all of the gains in PEPFAR are sustained in, um, in the future. And that can best be realized by engaging with the governments through what we're calling partnership frameworks. And that's just a process to begin the discussion to make that transition over a five-year period or longer. And do you, now you, you're talking about working with governments, a lot of industry like Secure the Future has uh, dropped back some of their, their programs because PEPFAR has come in and, and taken the place of those needs, the unmet needs. Uh, do you feel that you could partner with industry in making certain transi transitions and also with maybe ASOs or with nonprofits that are contributing from our country to other countries? Is there a way to bridge that gap mm -hmm. collectively and uh, in a convergent way? We have a initiative that is focused on private partnerships mm -hmm. that is embedded in PEPFAR, actually legislatively mandated in PEPFAR, uh, that um, tries to do just what you say. Mm -hmm. Engage civil society, but more specifically the business aspects within civil society, in looking for common synergies that may support, enhance, or amplify our prevention and treatment efforts. We also feel that the private sector affords a forum where men, especially, are convened in one place where we can reach them with prevention messages, testing, as well as treatment. Mm -hmm. So we see the private sector not just for resources that they may bring in, which would be welcomed, but also for the role that businesses that are in and amongst the communities in which we have these prevention and treatment programs can partner with us to make sure those messages are delivered, to change the format and forums in which they're delivered, and to give us an opportunity to reach individuals that we do not reach through prevention or medical uh, strategies currently in place. And will you be broadening out uh, the, the function and the research angles around uh, anal and vaginal microbicides and so forth? as well? Absolutely. Um, the needs of MSMs is under-focused on in most countries that we're in, uh, un not acknowledged frequently, uh, poorly understood. 
Indeed, um, I think that uh, our ability to engage MSM communities, injection drug using communities, commercial sex worker communities, transgender communities, uh, must be predicated on creating a safe space in which to do this. And that uh, necessitates a legal uh, strategy, legislative strategy that must be concomitant with a public health strategy. And we are well down the road in engaging on all those fronts in a number of countries. We appreciate that so much. I know that we have a lot of folks working in microbicides right now that would be very grateful to hear those. Yes, yes. And, and I know that it isn't just the, the, the uh, homosexual, it's the heterosexual because they Absolutely. use that as a form of birth control. So. Absolutely. So we have to consider that too. So very true. Uh, I really appreciate your work and I appreciate you're taking the time, Ambassador, to be with us here today. Pleasure. And uh, we hope to see you in the near, very near future. Well, I hope so, too. Thank, Thank you. you.